In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this simple chair. As you can see, the chair is basically made up of many different cubes. So we just have to create cubes, resize them, and place them in the right location. So let's begin the course. I'm going to start with cube. I'm using polygons for the entire process. So I can create polygon cube right from here from my shelf or I can create a cube by going to create menu and polygon primitives by choosing cube. Clicking on that will create a cube in my origin. Now I can change the size of it by going to the inputs in my channel box. Click on polycube1 and I'm going to make the width to be 5 height to be 0.3 and depth to be 5. So this creates the seat area of the chair. Great. So I'm going to push it, pull it up by choosing the move tool. I used W key for choosing the move tool. You can also choose move tool by going in the toolbox and choosing move tool. I'm just keeping it roughly there. I'll create one more cube. This time I'll click from the shelf to create a cube. I'm going to make it slimmer but taller. So I'll go back here to my inputs. I will choose width to be 0.5, depth to be 0.5, and height to be something like 4. So let's see, I think that's fair enough. I'll push it up. Now at this point we can use the other views other than the perspective view. I'll press spacebar and release quickly so that I can get the other views like top view, front view and side view. I'm going to use the front view. I'll press space again to maximize the front view. I can zoom in closer by using alt and right mouse button and I'm going to place it here. As you can see, we have the shaded mode on, so I'm not able to see where that grid line is exactly. So I can press 4 in my keyboard so that I can get my wireframe mode. I can place this exactly on this grid with the help of the grid snap. I'll turn on the grid snap. I'm going to click on this axis and place it there. I can also use the middle area to place it exactly in the vertical and horizontal level. I think that height is perfect, so I want to push this seat area also down. If I use now any of these axes, it will actually snap here. If you like this result, you can keep it like that. Otherwise, you can also turn off the grid snap and pull it up so that it matches exactly up here. For this example, I'm going to keep it inside. So I'll turn on my grid snap. I'll use this top, uh, I'll use this Y axis and place it there. Fine. So now this is matching up in one side. Let me just pull it to the other corner. I can also use my top view at this case. I'll make the top view bigger. Let me press 4 once again to get the wireframe mode. I'll click this and drag it down. So that comes to one corner. I'm going to use the same for the other side. So I'll duplicate this leg. I'll press Ctrl D to duplicate or I can also duplicate by going to edit and choosing duplicate. The shortcut key is Ctrl D. So now with the duplicate, I'm just moving into the next corner. You can also verify if, the, if it is in the right location by going to the top view. So it's perfect. Fine. So now the one in the back side, I have to be, I have to make it taller and actually wider. So I'll make one duplicate, Ctrl D. I'll pull it to the back side, okay? And here I want to make it taller. Now because we made a duplicate, we actually lose the input uh, history information. So we cannot change the height from there. So what we will do is, we'll go to the sub-object mode and we can manipulate the vertices. I'm going to right click on the object and choose vertex. And you can see that there are some vertices hiding there. I'll press 4 to actually see those vertices and I can zoom in closer to select all four of them. And now what I can do is I can just pull this up 
And I'm going to look at my side view to decide how much height I want. So I'll choose one, two, three, four units up there. So once we're done that, let me press five. I can press space bar to maximize. That looks great. Now I want to make another duplicate to the other side. I'll press control D and pull it all the way to the other side. We can go back to the top view and we can check if that is perfect. Looks nice. But one small change that I want to make is I want to make this go to the edge. Now you can either modify the seat to adjust that or you can modify the leg. So I'm going to adjust these vertices. I'll right click here, choose vertex. And all I want to do is I want to pull these vertices to the back extreme. So by keeping the point snap on, let me just click on this axis. So it goes to the back. And also I want to pull these to the right side. So there you go. So we made it actually thicker and it fits perfectly fine. Okay, we'll have to do the same step here for the left side. Go to vertex, select these two vertices, pull it back, and these ones, pull them side. If you don't like this to be very thick, you can also make them thinner or you can, uh, instead of making these uh, legs to be thicker, you can also make the seat to be a bit smaller. So that's up to you. Uh, so the next we want to make some cross lines here and then we want to make the uh, back side of the seat. So I'll just duplicate this existing leg to create the cross line. I'll press Control D. Let me make this view bigger. And I want to rotate exactly 90 degrees. So I'll give 90. And I want to make it smaller. So let me just select the scale tool, make it a bit smaller, maybe we could thinner and taller a bit. Okay, so now I want to go to the other side views. I can press 4 to see inside. I'm going to press W to get the move tool. It's actually snapping to the points. We don't need to snap to the points. We want to snap to grid, so I'll turn on snap to grid. I'll snap it here and I want to make it longer. That looks perfect. So now I just want to make some duplicates and before that I have to place them inside. Why did it come out? Okay, so let me just push him inside here. Okay, that looks perfect. Now all I have to do is make some duplicate, control D and push it all the way to the next area. That looks perfect. Now all we have to do is create this centerpiece. So I'll select this guy, control D to duplicate, rotate, and I'll use 90 degrees, pull it back, push it up somewhat like that. I want to scale to make it smaller and to make it stay inside. Great. Now if you want you can also make them more taller. So that's up to you as much tall as you want and you can keep it somewhere there. Okay. You can make it as big as you want or small as you want. Okay. So one more step that I want to do is I want to make a small arc up here. Okay. So to, add, to do that, we have to add some more divisions here. To add divisions, we can use the Insert Edge Loop tool. You can access the Insert Edge Loop tool either by going to Mesh Tools and there should be Insert Edge Loop tool, okay? And if you don't find this Mesh Tools options here, you have to make sure that you're in Modeling tab. So choose Modeling here, Mesh Tools, there should be Insert Edge Loop tool. And alternatively, you can also right, Shift, right click, press Shift key and right click and you can access insert edge loop tool. Let's go to the options. We want to add more divisions. So let me reset everything. If you have made any changes before, you can reset to get, get back to the default uh, values. And now I want to choose multiple edge loops. 
okay so that we can create multiple edge loops in a single click so I want to create some five different edge loops okay so choose five there and all you have to do is click any of these edges so you get five different divisions great so let me just close this up I'm gonna choose some of these um, edges I'll choose move tool select one I'll select from the right side one two three four five great so let me just pull all of them up let me turn off my snaps okay so pull it a little bit now deselect the one from the right side deselect one from the left side then we can pull it up deselect here deselect here and then one more step To make it look a bit nicer, I can turn on my ambient occlusion, I can turn on my wireframe mode so you can see how the wireframe looks. So this concludes this video on creating simple chair.